Hey friends, welcome back to Dad's Bedtime Stories. And unfortunately, I'm taking a sick day. I've got one of those dad colds, which if you ask around, is the worst kind of cold you can get, I promise. Luckily though, I uh, I just checked my voicemail, and I, I think I can still come through on the request. Let's have a listen. My name is August, and today I want a story about a Minecraft planet where everything's block, and even the trees are block, and when you mine stuff, it turns into a small block, and you have to walk up to pick it, and you, and you make a giant house. And there's part two. Now, I don't know if you're asking for this because you actually have listened to the episode that uh, where this basically happens. Uh, But if not, I've dug back into the vaults and I've found episodes 89 and 90 where uh, your wish already came true just uh, in advance. Either way, I'm hoping I'll feel better enough to uh, record another episode for this Tuesday. I'll think of something either way. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with a friend, comment, I don't know, interact in any way you can. And uh, we'll see you next time. Here's the story. Just close your eyes, get as comfortable as you can, and imagine yourself doing what the kid in the story does. You wake up flying on your spaceship once again. You get up out of bed, stretch to the left, and stretch to the right. You leave the bedroom area, and you head out into the main part of the spaceship. Hey spaceship, what's going on? You ask. Not much. We will be a while before the next planet. Uh, What am I going to do then? I guess there's lots to do on the ship. First you head over to the kitchen area. Hmm. Spaceship, make me my favorite breakfast. Understood, says spaceship. The table opens up and a plate of food pops up out of it. It has all of your favorite breakfast food on it. Just imagine what that would look like. And spend some time taking a few bites. When you're done with breakfast, you decide to go to the living room area. You sit down on the couch and turn on the TV. Uh, maybe some video games, you say. You grab the video game controller in your hand, and you turn it on. And just as you do, you hear, Alert! 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 What is it, you ask? We are approaching some sort of unknown storm with a strange energy. Look! You look out the front view screen, still sitting on the couch. You see strange pink energy floating around the ship, and pink lightning bolts shooting around in front of it. One of the lightning bolts hits the ship, and pink energy flies through the entire thing, and somehow gets absorbed in the game console. It starts to glow a bright pink color. Then the energy shoots to the remote and into your hands and arms. It's a very funny and tingly sensation. Your body starts to feel very energetic. And then it starts to change shape, transforming entirely into energy itself and being sucked straight into the video game console. You come out the other side and open your eyes. Everything looks very video gamey, but kind of like an older video game. You walk around and find that it's pretty easy to do. Everything around you is kind of square shaped almost like reality is made entirely out of blocks. You see a tree up ahead and you go up to it. The tree is 
seemingly made of four blocks of wood and a whole bunch of blocks of leaves. This is a very strange world. It reminds me of a certain video game, but you can't quite place it. Up ahead, you see what looks like a half-built house or something like that. You go up to it and you see three fully built walls made of stone in the center and wood on the edges. The roof is half complete. It almost looks like something blew up one side of the house. You look around, but you don't see anything to be worried about. In front of the house, there's a chest. You bend down and push open the latch on the chest and it pops up. Inside, you find a whole bunch of stuff. There's some food, a pickaxe, an axe, some armor, and a sword. Cool. You start by grabbing each piece of armor and putting it on. First your head, and then a chest piece and then pants and boots. You're now covered entirely in iron armor. You pick up the sword and lift it up over your back. It suddenly clips itself onto the back of your chest piece, almost like it's magnetic or something. Then you pick up the axe and the pickaxe. Where can I put these, you wonder? Then a strange sensation goes through you, and the axe suddenly absorbs into your hand. Axe added to inventory, says a voice. Spaceship, is that you? I believe so. I believe we have been sucked into a video game. My role seems to be your advisor and assistant says spaceship. Uh, okay, well, what just happened with the axe? You ask. The axe was absorbed into your inventory. You can see it here, says spaceship. Suddenly, in your field of vision, little blocks pop up, each one with a symbol and a number on it. One of the blocks is full with a picture of an axe, and has a one beside it. One axe? How do I get it out if I want it? Just focus on that part of the inventory and it will materialize. You focus on that part of the inventory and suddenly the axe pops back out your hand and you're holding it again. Cool. You then reach down at the other objects You think about absorbing them into your body, and they suddenly dematerialize and kind of enter your hand. They then each pop up on one of the inventory slots in your field of vision. Cool. I have an inventory, you say. Well, I guess we better finish this house or something. May as well be useful while we're here. Good idea, says Spaceship. If we attempt to play the game, we may find an exit. That's a good idea, you say. First, you look at the parts that are missing from the house. Okay, we're gonna need wood. You run over to a tree nearby. You reach out your hand and focus your mind on the axe, and an axe pops out of your hand. You begin smashing the axe against one of the blocks of wood. And after a few hits, the wood just explodes and begins to float sort of on its side. When you reach out your hand, the wood absorbs into your inventory and pops up right in front of you with a number one beside it. Neat. You keep going chopping the wood down with your axe, and block by block you collect about 20 or 25 of them from different trees in the area. 
You bring them back to the house. You go up to one of the places missing a piece of wood. Think about the wood appearing and it appears in your hand. You place it down where it looks like it should go when you have a look. But it looks wrong. You've just put a normal tree trunk beside the house and it's made of some other kind of wood. Like processed wood or something like that. Why don't you try the workbench, says the spaceship. You look behind you and there's a huge workbench. You haven't seen this before. On the left side of the workbench is a place for materials. You place the wood on the little slot on the left. Then in the center are a series of buttons. When you place the wood down, one of them lights up and it says, Make wooden planks. Okay. You press the button and suddenly the wood is sucked into the workbench. The workbench jumps up and down and bops around. And then a slot on the other side opens up and out pop four wooden planks that look exactly like the wood used in the rest of the house. You repeat the process a few times until you have enough wooden planks. Then you begin building the house bit by bit. When all of the wooden sides are up, you notice that you're still missing the rock. You look around the area and you find a big pile of rock. You run over to the pile of rock, which is made up entirely of little blocks. You focus your mind on your pickaxe, which appears in your hand, and you begin to hit the rock as hard as you can. Just like the trees, after a few hits, the rock explodes and then reappears as a little floating square that you can easily absorb into your inventory. You break a whole bunch of the rocks as quickly as you can. And once you feel like you have enough to finish the wall, you bring them back towards the house. You go to the side of the house that's missing its wall, and bit by bit, you take the stones out of your inventory and build the wall back up. Before long, you place the last brick in the wall, and nothing happens. Oh, right, I have to finish the roof, you realize. You head back over to the workbench and you try to read all of the things on it. You see that one of the options is roof planks. You try putting on one of the raw pieces of wood, but nothing happens. Hmm, maybe, you say. Then you take out one of the planks and put it on the left side of the workbench. Suddenly, the button to create roof planks lights up. You press the button, and the plank of wood gets sucked into the table. It jumps and bobs around until out the other side comes a perfect roof plank. You repeat the process until you have enough of them to finish the roof. Then, you realize you have no way to get onto the roof. Ugh, wait a second, these roof planks look just like stairs, you say. You place one of them in front of you, and then another in front of that, and another in front of that, until you have a high enough set of stairs to make it on the top of the wall. You walk up the stairs, stand on the top, and then you begin to finish the roof of the house. When you put in the last piece, the house suddenly lights up, jumps up off the ground and lands down again. A whole bunch of gems shoot out of the bottom of it. You absorb all of the gems into your inventory, thinking these might be important. Then the front door to the house opens up. You walk over to it and enter the house. Inside, there's a little table and chairs, a little storage area with a bunch of chests, and on the other side, there's a bed. But 
What's that shining in the middle of the floor? You walk to the middle of the floor and you find a trap door. What could be down there, you wonder? You walk over to the trap door and open it up. Inside, there's a ladder that leads its way down. You decide to go check things out. You carefully crawl your way down the ladder until it stops. You turn around and you can see a whole basement area. And at the other end of the basement area is some sort of, well, like an archway made of black stone. But it doesn't look completely finished. And just as you're looking, you hear a strange squealing sound. And some sort of square-looking spider jumps out in front of you. It has bright red eyes. And it starts to make strange screeching noises. You quickly reach for your sword on the back of your chest piece and pull it out. As the spider jumps towards you, you swing your sword at it and hit the spider. Nothing really happens other than the spider kind of makes a weird screeching noise and bounces back. It comes at you again and you do the same thing. And then again and again and again, each time you hit it, it makes a weird noise and bounces back. Then it jumps straight for you. You swing your sword as hard as you can. And the spider basically disappears into a puff of smoke and leaves behind some web and a book. Why did the spider have a book, you wonder? You absorb the web into your inventory, you know, just in case you need it later, and you pick up the book. You open it up and it says, Rules for Portals. Step 1. Finish portal. Step two, set fire to portal. Step three, go home. Spaceship, you say. I think we have to finish this portal in order to get home. That is what I was thinking as well, says Spaceship. Well, let's get to it. Just as you say that, a powerful feeling of fatigue or tiredness comes over you. Your eyes start to get really, really heavy. Why do I feel this way, you ask? It seems to be nighttime in the game. I recommend trying to sleep, says Spaceship. Okay, you say. You slowly walk over to the ladder and climb back up, but again, you can't seem to go very fast. You get to the top and crawl over to the bed. You pull yourself up onto the bed, pull the covers over top of yourself, and suddenly, when you close your eyes, you see something that says, Nighttime Mode Activated. And suddenly, in the middle of your vision, words appear that say, Morning. You open your eyes and look around. You're in the same little house that you helped rebuild the day before. And now you need to find some way to finish the portal, set it on fire, and get back home. You open the hatch to the basement and crawl down. Once again, you see a half-built portal-like structure made out of big black and purple blocks. There's three of them missing, but you don't see any of them around here. Huh, I wonder where I'll get those. You head back up the ladder and into your house. You go out the door and you look around for anything that looks like these rocks. You go under trees, and you pass by a little river, and then in front of you, you see two torches lighting up what looks to be 
a cave entrance or something like that. You decide to go check it out. You walk over towards the cave entrance. You grab your sword off your back just in case and you inch yourself forward. It's getting really dark inside the cave. Hmm, I need something to help with this. You look back at the cave entrance and there's another chest there. You run up to the chest and open the latch. Inside, you see a whole bunch of torches. You reach your hand out and absorb all of them into your inventory. Suddenly, a little box appears that says, Torches. 36. 36 torches? That should be good enough. You imagine one in the palm of your hand, and suddenly it disappears from your inventory and appears back in your hand. You shine it around a little and it lights up the dark area. Slowly holding your sword in one hand and the torch in the other, you make your way into the deep, dark cave. Suddenly you see two red eyes, not another spider. The spider jumps out of the darkness right towards you. You swing your sword at it and once again it bounces off and makes a strange sound. It continues to jump towards you and you continue to hit it with your sword. Bit by bit you feel that it must be losing some of its health. It jumps up in the air again and with one last swing as hard as you can make it, the spider poofs into a puff of smoke once again. It drops a whole bunch of webs and some sort of vial of mysterious liquid. You pull both of them into your inventory. Then you hold your torch forward and you try to make your way back into the cave. You follow a long and winding path. Eventually you come to some stairs that go down and down and down. At the bottom of the stairs you think you see a little bit of light kind of an orangey red light. You continue down the stairs and when you get to the bottom, you see a long hallway with stone on every side of it. And at the end, there seems to be some sort of glowing orange light or something. You keep your sword out in one hand and your torch in the other, and you make your way through the dark hallway. And when you get to the other side, you end up in a huge cavern, and the cavern's lit by what looks like a lava waterfall. A whole bunch of lava is pouring out of a hole in the cavern above and spilling down onto the ground. And even better than that, at the base of some of the lava, you see that blacky, purplish stone that makes up the portal. You immediately head over to the stone. You clip your sword to your back once again, and you imagine your pickaxe in your right hand. The pickaxe appears, and you put your torch down near where you're working. You begin to hit the dark piece of stone as many times as you can. Each time it starts to crack just a tiny bit. It seems like it's going to take forever. Then you feel a really weird sensation and your inventory pops up in front of you and one of the hearts that's normally full begins to blink. Something hurt you. Or maybe hurts the wrong word because you didn't even feel it. Then you feel another one of those strange blinking sensations as if your whole body is blinking. And again, another half of a heart disappears. You turn around and look to see what you can see. And in the distance, there's a skeleton with a bow and arrow. Don't worry, he doesn't look very scary. He's more of a cartoony looking boxy skeleton that just keeps walking left and right and shooting little arrows towards you. 
You put your pickaxe down and you grab your sword from behind your back again. The next time he shoots an arrow, you swipe your sword and hit it out of the way. Wow, your reflexes are really good. He shoots again and once again you hit it out of the way as you move towards him. Every time he shoots the arrow, you easily hit it out of the way and run closer and closer. When you get close enough, you wind up with your sword and you swing it at the skeleton. The skeleton, a lot like the spider did, makes a weird mm sensation and bounces up into the air and away from the sword. He tries to hit you again, you block and swing your sword at him, and the same thing happens. He makes that strange sound and bounces back. He keeps trying to get you with his arrows and you keep hitting them out of the way, one by one, and in between each, you strike him once with your sword and he bounces back. Eventually, you hit him one more time and he disappears in a puff of smoke. Weird. He leaves behind three bones, a bow and a bunch of arrows. You quickly absorb them all into your inventory. Then you head back towards the rock you were trying to break. You pick up the pickaxe once again and you start hitting it against the rock as hard as you can. After a while, the rock finally breaks. It disappears and then reappears again as a much smaller block that's just kind of floating above the ground. You absorb it into your inventory and you see a new entry. It has a picture of the black rock with a one beside it. You do the same thing two more times, hitting the rock over and over as it slowly cracks and eventually disappears and reappears as a little floating block. When you have three of them, you head back in the direction you came from, back into the long hallway, up the staircase and through a cave. You exit the cave and walk back towards your house that you can see ahead of you up on a hill. You walk back up to your house, you enter through the door and immediately open the hatch to the basement. You crawl down and run over to the half-built portal. As you walk towards it, you imagine one of those black and purple blocks in your hand, and it appears there. You put it in place, and it solidifies as hard as could be right where you decide to put it. You use the blocks to complete the portal shape, and then you try to remember what you were supposed to do next. All right, we're supposed to light a fire. How do I do that, you wonder? Then you remember the torches. You think of one of the torches appearing in your hand, and it does. You reach the torch down and touch the portal, and suddenly the entire thing starts to glow in a bright purple color. Weird. The portal has been completed now to see where it goes. You step into the portal and you feel a strange whooshing noise and then your body seems to stretch itself through a portal and rematerialize on the other side. You find yourself in a strange dark almost red looking world. Up above you there's ground, and down below you there's ground. It's almost as if it's an underground world. Far off in the distance you can see a little glowing purple light. I think that might be another portal spaceship, what do you think? I believe it is, says the voice inside your head. Now I know I haven't mentioned this in this episode, but uh, if you recall from the last episode, spaceship turned into the voice inside your head when you uh, entered the video game, so just something to remember there. Anyways, you decide that you have to get closer to the portal. 
you begin running through the newfound area as quickly as you can. But you eventually come to the edge of a cliff. Down below you is just a huge pool of lava. There's no way up or around, and the portal you think you need to get to is just floating there in the middle. Huh, how do we get there? I recommend building a bridge, says the voice inside your head. That's a great idea. You materialize your pickaxe in your hand and run over to some of the little blocks of stone that are all around you. You begin to break as many pieces of stone as you can, as quickly as you can, and absorb them into your inventory. Once you think you have enough, you go to the side of the cliff and one by one, you materialize a block in a square in front of you and walk onto it. You do the same thing again and again, being careful not to fall off the edge. And when you're about halfway there, you hear a loud growl. You look around you and you see a dragon flying through the air. The dragon comes near you and you duck down and out of the way, narrowly missing it. It begins to fly back around the portal in the center of the cavern. Uh Uh-oh, how are we going to deal with this? Spaceship uh, slash inventory? Do you have any ideas here? No, says Spaceship. Uh, I wish we had a control caller or something like that, you say. Control caller, recipe, located, says Spaceship. There's a recipe for a control caller? What do I need? It says you need some blocks from the other world, a vial of spider poison, four webs, and three bones from a skeleton. Oh my goodness, you say? I have all of those things. Then you are lucky. Find a workbench to put it together. Where am I going to find a workbench around here, you say? You could make one, says Spaceship. What do you mean I can make one? All you need is four planks of wood. I have four planks of wood. What do I do with them to make a workbench, you ask? Just think about making a workbench, says Spaceship. All right, so I just hold these four pieces of wood in my hand, you say. And then I think, hey, workbench, make yourself. Suddenly, the four pieces of wood combine themselves together in a puff of smoke. And a workbench appears in front of you. Okay. The dragon is getting closer behind you. You look over your shoulder. And then you quickly turn back to the workbench. You put all of the materials you need. The bones, the poison, the webs, the blocks on the left side of the workbench, and then a button appears that says, Control Caller. You press the button, and all of the materials disappear into the workbench, and on the other side appears a Control Caller. You pick it up in your hands, turn around quickly, and you see that the dragon's coming straight towards you. It's dipping down near you, You step to the side, jump up in the air on top of the dragon, and snap the control collar around its neck. The dragon suddenly goes still and floats down to the ground, bouncing once or twice. Then it seems to shake its head, get back up, and turn around to look at you. It turns its head to the side, and it lets you pet it on the cheek. A good dragon? Knowing that the dragon is now under the control of the control caller, you ask it a question. Hey, uh, dragon, do you think you could give me a ride to that portal over there? That would be really, really helpful, you say. The dragon looks at the portal and then looks back at you. 
It turns around and bends down as much as it can. You hop on top of its back. It flaps its wings just once and suddenly starts floating into the air. It's very unrealistic looking, frankly. It floats over towards the purple portal and it stops right beside it with its wing stretching out towards the portal. You stand up and walk down the dragon's wing towards the portal. Thanks, buddy, you say, and then you jump inside. You find yourself in the center of a wormhole that's entirely purple on every side. And at the end is a bright shining light. As you hit the shining light, you feel your body tingling and transforming. And then you find yourself rematerializing on the couch inside your spaceship. What happened? I believe we were in a video game, says the spaceship. How did you get sucked in? Yeah, never mind, you say. I'm feeling tired. Spaceship, maybe you analyze what happened here so we can either reproduce it if we want to or stop it from happening ever again. Understood, says Spaceship. You're feeling very tired and you decide that the couch is as good a place as any to go to sleep. Spaceship, get the lights. The lights dim down to the perfect amount of brightness. You swing your feet up onto the couch and you find a blanket folded up behind it. You spread the blanket out and get nice and warm and comfy. You start to take slow, deep breaths and allow all of your muscles to just relax as if they're melting and sinking deeper into the couch. You let your arms melt and your legs melt and then you close your eyes and you let your brain just go where it wants to go. Good night, everyone.